Hello there, friends. Let's design a modern account creation or sign up page inside of Figma and we'll create a dribble shot that goes with it. Let's get started. All right, let's dive into the project and take a look at the assets that we've prepared for the project. We have a FigJam file open that has an already pre-created wireframe for the project. Um, I've drawn it out and it's uh, a desktop pattern that has kind of a rule of two thirds vibe going on. We have kind of our key art or imagery over on the left-hand side with a little bit of a tagline and a logo. And on the right-hand side, we have all of the account creation um, kind of details. So name, email, password, all the input fields, call to action, secondary call to actions to sign up with social media. We have an empty Figma file that we're going to be using. We also have a couple of community assets. This first one's called Open Logo. It's made by Nathan Covert. Go and support him. It's just a bunch of fake logos that you can use for your projects. Pretty cool. And then next we have social media logos made by Bricks Template. Uh, so go give them some love as well. But we're probably going to be using a couple of these rounded ones for our project. We have that key art over here. We downloaded it from Invato Elements, a cool 3D piece of art. And with that being said, I'm going to grab my entire wireframe here from FigJam, Command-C, Command-V, uh, and I'm going to paste it into my Figma file. Now I'm going to hit A for artboard or for frames, and I'm going to pick a desktop you guessed it, 1440 by 1024. That's going to be the size of our project. Now, if we wanted to, uh, this is a very imperfect wireframe, but we could, if we wanted to, stretch it out to be like 1440. I'm actually going to pull that key graphic in because I'm probably going to start pulling some colors and different elements out of it. So let's just shrink it down because it's ginormous right now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to immediately start kind of pulling some colors out of our key graphic because we're not working with pre-established branding we can kind of do whatever we want so let's have a little bit of fun today so i'm just going to uh out of my let's see my key graphic here i'm going to draw some rectangles and i'm going to duplicate a couple of them like so and i'm going to grab the first one hit i for the eyedropper tool let's grab this color of pink let's grab this deeper color of purple let's grab this kind of light this looks kind of like a peachish color we'll grab it right from i don't know over there that looks kind of nice and then maybe we'll even grab a little bit of this it looks like brass or copper but it comes off as kind of like a dark peach color okay so uh all right so we have some colors selected already um i think what we should do is let's just start really quickly by giving our background one of these colors that's a pretty pretty brutal purple color but we'll see if we can work with it because the next thing i'm going to do is i'm probably going to draw another frame um and i'm going to draw it let's see about the entire size of the initial frame or the entire size of our website and then i'm going to come into width and i'm going to say divided by three and then that's 480 and then, then i'm going to take 480 and times it by two right there in our uh, actual width panel we could do a little bit of math inside let's make it white let's drag it over to the side and now you have a little bit of that rule of two-thirds um, and that's like exactly two-thirds we could play with it a little bit if we want and kind of break that but for now I think that's working pretty good let's just uh let's take our key art and hit shift h and horizontally flip it and bring it inside and shrink down the size so it's something like that kind of cool looking already cool I like it all right uh, next thing we want to do is you know you can have this like straight break right here of the two different panels of color one thing that might be kind of fun is let's just uh we'll change the top left and the bottom left corners of this so i'm just going to open that up by giving different corner border radiuses and let's just do the corner something big like 40 and we'll go to the last one and we'll do the same thing we'll do 40 so it's kind of just curling around the bottom and if we want to we could do a little bit of drop shadow on that i don't think we're going to one thing i don't want is i don't want things to look like they're they're clipped in any way so i know it's a small detail but i want to make sure that it it really has dimensionality to it so that's really what i'm going for here okay um let's see let's pick a really fun typography to be more of like our display font and then we can have more of a basic piece of font or type inside that will be a lot more legible we want something kind of fun i'm going to pop something on screen here and we have enter already pulled up so let's do something like create account i like enter for our normal very usable text here 
And let's jump up to 16 and we'll just make one a little bit bigger there. Okay, we're on semi bold. We could jump up to bold if we wanted to. And we can just see how these might like kind of line up. Let's go back down to 16 and we'll do something like uh, first name here like that. And then we can do last name. Here's a fun logo right there, or actually this is a really fun one right here. So we're gonna bring that in, paste it right there in the top, and let's make it, we'll just do something really simple. We'll just go nice and white here. Um, so just the logo at the top. And I think uh, there's a, a fun font that I've been playing with called Sign. Um, and if you go like bold, you get like these really wide characters like this, that could be fun. It can be very like branded, very marketing, very kind of, you know, interesting, not just your standard like font. So, uh, what did our wireframe say? Uh, blender allows you to imagine in 3d, we can't call this blender. So let's call it Blenda allows you to imagine in 3d. All right. Well, something like that. And then we'll kind of clip the space. And now we have a little bit of a marketing like tag there. Okay, things are looking pretty good. I don't like the color that's behind this at all. So what we could do is let's play with a, uh, creating some kind of soft gradients and mesh gradients inside. So I'm gonna hit, uh, let's see, I'm gonna hit O like this. And then I'm going to just hit return on it and we'll be able to like create some blobs like this, right? So let's create a blob there. I think there's probably a plugin called blobs. There is, let's try that. Let's see how that works for us. Um, okay, yeah, cool. Complexity, yeah, yeah, like this. Uniqueness, uh, okay, something like that. Insert a blob, insert another blob. We'll make a bunch of blobs like that and that's a lot faster for us. So we use plugins when we want to save some time. So here I'm gonna hit I and I'm just gonna bring in our colors. I think we'll probably ignore the dark one and let's just work off of these light ones. What we wanna do is, well, let's do it to all of them. We'll see how it goes. We're gonna put an effect and we're gonna put a layer blur and we're just gonna bring that blur up like so. And uh, let's do this. Let's bring the opacity of them down just a little bit, like something like 70. And let's start bringing these interesting blurs. Let's do something really, really easy and do something like this, okay? So I'm gonna grab create account and we could play with the size of these typography. We're not being really exact here for the typography, but let's just do something we can either do. Um, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what, let's make some fun input field styles here, okay? Uh, these probably are not gonna be black. So let's do this. Let's grab all of those take them off of bold go a little bit more like medium because we need to establish some hierarchy here um, for elements and then also we don't want them to be so in your face um, this also i think is pure black we never want to use pure black let's use something like an off black i like that and then i tell you what, we're going to do this we're going to hit um you know let's go f for frame and let's draw some nice input fields like so we'll put a stroke on them um, I think that could probably work well. And let's bring whatever this color was, we would save that if we if we were really into it, we could save it as a, uh, we'll just call it gray, but we would save it as a style and name it something really, really good, right? Because then we can come in here to our input fields. Um, where is our input field, our frame right there. And we can select our gray that we used. Awesome. And then let's uh, just drop it to about an eight pixel border radius. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our piece of text, shift A, turning it into an auto layout. And then we're gonna fill it with white. And that frame can go above the other frame or technically it could go inside of the frame. And you're like, what, wait a minute. Cause what we need to do is not clip the content. And then you have your, your little, uh, your little label, but it sits up and outside, which I think is kind of like a fun way to do labels. And we can just double click on it and make sure that it has zero spacing, zero spacing. Actually let's do, 
zero spacing on the left and right uh, or on the top and bottom, but then we'll have eight pixels of spacing on the left and right. That way you get these little kind of breaks in between. I think that's pretty nice. I'm into that. Um, and let's make sure we're using gray for all of our labels like so. And you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of these because this uh, input field, input field is exactly what we want. And so we can just drag that over and line it up and oh, watch out now we could do, and you know what we could do also is you could take your input field and you could fill it with white. And the only reason I would do that is so that I have the ability to grab it from anywhere and it doesn't get kind of sticky, so. Right, now let's make a button. Um, so let's take our text and we'll paste that text right there. It's really, really big, but we do want a little bit, you know, like chunkier and a little bit more uh, like beefier, like typography or for our button. So I put the type down first. I'm gonna flip the color of it over to white and then I'm gonna shift A on it. And I tell you what, let's just do this. We'll fill and we will find a color um, let's see, maybe, yeah, maybe a color from over in here, like one of our colors. Maybe that's not quite vibrant enough. Yeah, that will work. So let's use the purple like that. Okay. And we're going to come back in, same thing. Um, eight pixels of border radius to give it a little bit of space. We want plenty of space on the top and bottom, a nice big button. Um, and we can put that right there. And if we want to, we can stretch it out like so and make sure that everything's centered. Uh, it's a bit tall because our f input fields are 64 and this one is 74. So we can do just a little bit less. And now we have something that looks a little bit similar to the other one. Now, when we shrink this down, it might change the size of our, our button. And that's fine. We can come back in here and just get it close a little bit close to where it was or what it was before. Okay, so that's great. So let's bring that up. So it's connected to our actual uh, like form fields. And then the last thing we need to do is a little piece of text down here that just says uh, that if you already have an account, you can feel free to sign up. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the entire project and we're just going to kind of round the corners of it, and we'll take those and plop those inside of a dribble shot. So I'm gonna do it like this. And I'm gonna get rid of all of these pieces, work it inside of our dribble shot. So let's grab the key art and delete it, unlock the panel left stuff, and just get the blobs out, that's what we need the panel left stuff can go. Um, and if you want to, we could play with these a lot and you could, you know, group them together and rotate them around um, and play with the opacity of them, you know, so you have a little bit more subtle of that mesh vector going on. So let's just bring them down and make them a little bit more subtle like so. And then um, what we can do is, yeah, we have a nice dribble shot. I wanna make sure this is a good size for dribble. So let's go to social media and we'll say dribble shot HD. That's uh, 800 by 600. So let's try to go, uh, we'll scale this down and go 800 like that. And then we'll do 600. You kind of scale that down. Perfect. That's a that's kind of a good dribble shot. And then we could actually take the yeah, we could actually take the roundedness off of there. And then let's take K for scale and bring our mesh gradient in. Group it all together. And then why don't we bring the opacity down a little bit more because it looks a little spotted. So let's make it a little bit more subtle like that. Great, awesome. Uh, then you can take this whole thing. You don't have to export it out if you don't want to. You just have to make sure that everything inside is unlocked. So let's just make sure everything's unlocked. We will scale it all down. Um, and then we will actually just rotate a little bit and bring it into our shot. 
and we can scale down a little bit more so we get it inside. If we had multiple pieces, we might we might twist it, but we're not gonna twist it. We're gonna put it kind of dead center like this. And then what I would like to do is come in here and do another fill that has just a little bit more uh, dark like opacity on it. So this thing kind of pops. Let's do maybe like 20%. And then this frame is gonna need just a little bit of a drop shadow and we'll blur that up and bring the opacity of it down to be like 10 pixels. And there you are, you have a nice dribble shot for your portfolio. Now, if you'd like to mix and match the colors, you can do that, but we have a pretty slick little dribble shot uh, that you can actually use and post up right now. Well, that's it. We designed a modern account creation page inside of Figma, and we even made a dribble shot out of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I make lots of videos about design development and even design tutorials like this one. So make sure you ring that bell so you know when more videos come out. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comments and check the description for some helpful links. If you want to get your hands on these design files, consider becoming one of my design champion members. The link for that's down in the description as well. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things, making amazing things, and pushing the limits of what you can create. We'll see you in the next one.